this is absolutely stunning Stingray 95. 1966. 1966. Why did I think it was a 95? I don't have any idea. I have no <laughs> idea either. Well, what I do know is absolutely brilliant. Lou, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. <laughs> Why don't you come over here, stand in front of your car. Absolutely stunning. How long have you guys had this for? Well, we bought it in 1994, and okay. it was uh, the Nassau Blue. It had a 350 motor, and my husband wanted to do a frame-off restoration, and, um, and that's what he did. He just started taking it apart. It took many years. It's, we call it a 20-year labor of love, but yep. he did every single thing except the paint, body, and interior. Um, but the car has been widened seven inches, and the guy who did the fiberglass is a master with fiberglass. And basically, they cut the car in all the quarters and filled it in because he wanted it to look as original as possible. And so if you know anything about Corvettes, the lines are very distinct, and he kept the, the body lines. And, um, and then he put in a, a Lingenfelder big block 502 motor and um, Basically, he put the whole thing together, wow. polished every part. Wow, this yeah. is just brilliant. It's artwork. It's not it's really a car. It's absolutely yeah. artwork. You know, when you were telling me that when you got this in 96, you were just explaining, you know, it was blue and that. You were not that wowed by it. No. You know, that, that was, you guys were destined to get it and do a full frame of restoration. Yes. And you did that and you did that so well absolutely love it and and the and the wheels are special wheel they're um boyd coddington one-offs basically there's only a one pair in the west coast and one pair in the east coast and boyd's family allowed us to have it once we told him what we were doing with the car and they agreed to um do an, a specialty wheel for us over here on the east coast custom wheels yeah. one of a kind wheels yeah. The, like I said, if you the car has been widened seven inches, three and a half inches on each side. The, the half shafts are chrome, and yeah, wow. I don't know every single thing. No, you know, but, you know um, what? I was just about to say, Lou, you know so much about this. We, you were there, part of the whole build as well. Yes, you were there. You were assisting and you were helping. Well, yeah. Oh, you did most <laughs> of the work. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. You did. did but uh, King's upholstery. Yep. Oh, the guys that did this, they're out of Roanoke, Virginia. They're incredible. Just some subtle... Look at this. Um, like if you look at their little red lines, they're there to match the vents on the side of the car. My husband handmade all of the... Wow. A lot of the stuff. Wow. Those three stripes. You see the vents here. Yep. Match the trim in the interior. Wow, this is just brilliant. And uh, the door handles have been shaved, so you have door poppers, so there's no door handles. Just some little trick things that not the average person would know, but um, yeah. This is brilliant. That's <laughs> why you are here. Now, what class are you competing in? Well, uh, I, I, they wrote it down here for us. Yeah. They're calling it full sports, which full we don't really sports. know. Okay. It, it's really considered a resto mod. Yep. Um, it's a modified restoration. Modified restoration. <laughs> but it, here in Detroit, they're calling it a full sports. Full sports. Okay. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Sterling, Virginia. Nice. So yeah. Very nice. Even the vents, the hood, these are called bezels. These bezels were created because the hood had to be raised to fit this motor in and basically they took the vents made an autocad drawing and then had it cnc to match wow. what the originals were like so a lot of little tiny custom details it's those custom details that really make it and have it step aside from all the other cars isn't it it's just brilliant it stands out yeah it's brilliant. And have you always been Corvette fans? Pretty much, but pretty much any old school, you know, cars, um, okay. hot rods, we love them. Camaros are my favorite. Nice. I'm hoping to have one of those done here 
Sure. We'll okay. See. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's good. I love the fact that you like the different type of cars. Yes. It's not just the Corvette. It's not yeah. just the Camaros, but. Yeah. You've got a variety. Well, you can really learn to, once I learned his handiwork, you learn to appreciate all the guys and all the time and effort that it takes for them to, because um, it's really, truly a gift. Thank you for mentioning that, Lou, because that's what I have learned yes. um, over the past uh, less than a year now that the channel's been up. One thing that I appreciate always, always, always is the build, the dedication, the time and effort and energy that goes into the cars. And um, that's why I want to come here and talk to the people. Yeah. and. And the, well, the thing that's special about my husband's is that he did it himself. We didn't have a team. Yeah. And that's what makes it, you know, a little extra special because, you know, when you have a whole team helping you, it makes a difference. You know, when you watch on TV, you yes. got all these guys, but it was different for us because he did it all himself. He did it all so. himself. And the man is there as well. So we're going to get him just a little bit in camera. He's too busy talking. Everybody wants to know about his build. <laughs> So that's awesome. Thank you so much, right, Lou. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. All right, everybody. It is packed here for the Autorama in Detroit. I'm with Al. Al, how's it going? Very good. Having a great time. It's good. We just ran into each other. Now Al is going to be seeing me, and I'll be hanging out with him at Run to the Sun at Myrtle Beach. What are the dates for that? The dates are St. Patrick's Day weekend, so it's Thursday. I'm not sure the exact dates. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, over 3,200 cars. Uh, I think it's 46 acres, two blocks from the beach, and an empty parking lot. Sounds like a whole lot of fun. And you know what? Al, what do you do there? That's the fun part. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm in charge this year, I should say, or handling, we call Gasoline Alley. So Gasoline Alley is a group of 20 unique, historic, traditional race cars that are coming from 11, uh, 8 states, excuse mm -hmm. me. Everything from dragsters to funny cars to gasers to Walters to Indy cars. Cars going back to 1913. No, I all love on that. Dis all on display. Yeah. Original uh, NASCARs. Uh, Bill Ryan from Ryan Enterprise out of Denver, uh, no, excuse me, Denver, North Carolina. He owns 30 to 40 cars. He's bringing the original Dale Earnhardt number seven wow. Lumina. That sounds awesome. Gasoline Alley. The engines are going to get turned on. It's going to be absolutely pumping. But we're not done. We have Linda Vaughn coming. Linda Everybody Vaughan's knows coming. Linda I love Vaughan, her. Lady of drag racing. <laughs> yes, yeah. who I know for a long time. And Will Conkright. Will Conkright is a gentleman who gave Dale Sr. his first ride to go NASCAR racing. Okay, I did not know that, but I will be seeing him, seeing Linda and Gasoline Alley yep. at Run to the Sun Car Show. But you know what? We're here in Detroit right now and part of the Great Eight. So, what I learned today, since it's my first time here, the Great Eight is the top cars where one of them would be then named the Fiddler. Yes, one's going to be named the Riddler. So the great The Riddler. Eight, Riddler. I said the Fiddler. We're close. So in order to qualify for a grade eight, the yeah. car cannot be seen anywhere. No pictures, no movies, nowhere. Wow. If you go to a hot rod shop and it's being built there and somebody's taking pictures, like I take pictures all over the country, yeah. can't take a picture of that car. Okay. So it has to unveil here. It has to run because years ago, guys would build cars and they never ran. They would just slap it together. So the cars have to run. This year, I think there was uh, 16 to 18 contenders. Okay. So now we're down to the grade eight. So when you we come saw to the 55 Chevy, that is part of the grade eight. We had a great interview there with Mike, I believe it was, and um, we have a, there's a Nova we're going to look at. There's a Nova, yep. And there's a, the Custom and a couple pickup trucks, um, which is very unique about this particular event. When you come here, if you win a grade eight, you're happy. You got to go home. Yeah. The winner Riddler. It's a little more icing on the cake. Yes. Uh, you know, I've had friends of mine that have grade eight cars. They're happy. They didn't care about the. They got a grade eight. They came to Detroit. They had a great time. That's awesome. Now the Riddler, of course, um, is from Rod. Was it Rod Riddler who made the first no, uh, show? No. I, I apologize. I can't remember the gentleman's name. He's a gentleman who started this. Uh, could be 50 years ago. Yeah. So there's been all types of cars for the Riddler. There's been dragsters. There's been um, trucks. There's been uh, alters. There's been different types of race cars. Wow. Uh, now so it's, it's come old down. Cars right. From so now, all now it's come down to. You need to have fenders on a car. Uh, fenderless cars you can't have. Okay. It might make the grade eight. But you, we don't. I don't feel it'll make a Riddler. Um, no offense. Trucks. Truck hasn't been picked for the Riddler in a long time. Okay. So they're looking for a full finished car. Well, we're going to go have a look. Al's going to show me what he thinks would be the Riddler of the year 2023, the 70th Yes. Riddler. So um, 
Let's go have a walk. We'll have a quick look at the great eight because I don't think I'll be here when the winner gets announced. All right, so according to Al, he believes that this is going to be the Riddler of the Year for 2023. Hey, Al, come over here and tell okay. me, why is this your favorite car? All right, why is this my favorite car? Well, a couple things. Um, I'm not a big custom guy, but this custom makes me smile, okay? <laughs> uh, Bruce Harvey, who one of my customers on Racing yep. Junk, had last year's winner. So last year's winner was a 31 Chevy, and it was so over the top. I mean, you looked at this thing and you didn't know where to start or stop. It was just phenomenal. To come back the next year with a car to compete for the Riddler in grade eight, and to come up with a custom, uh, it shows me that you can do both ends of the spectrum. Both ends, yep. I love this car, I love the paint. Uh, I love the way the car, how, I love the front of the car, I love the taillights. I like the chop and the channel on the particular car. I like the stripe down the side where it kind of blends in. And the big thing is, there hasn't been a lot of customs that are attempting to go for the rim reward. Okay. That's my biggest thing. Well, I appreciate that, Al. I'm gonna go have a look at the car, give the viewers a good look around, and then we're gonna chat with the builder and see exactly what he's done. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh man, okay, I'm absolutely loving my time here at the Autorama, the big, the monster of all shows. Okay, the custom cars here are absolutely phenomenal. I'm seeing the grade eight up close, and you know what? The competition is tough. Now, with me, I've got here Glenn, Guys, I spoke to Al before. Glenn, how's it going? It's going great, Rana. How are you? Good. Now, you were one of the great eights. Yes, I was. Last year, we brought a car, a 36 Pontiac, called the Prohibition. Uh, got a lot of compliments. Went on to other ISCA shows and won and got a closet full of trophies. Nice. And Why went not? to SEMA with it and was with our friends at Racing Junk at SEMA. So it's been a crazy year, 2022. We had a flash. <laughs> uh, taking this year off, not okay. going to crazy show cars. We've got one in the works for next year. Okay. So that'll all be fun, and, and it's great to return to the scene of the crime. Exactly. <laughs> it's fun. It's and fun. How many years have you been coming here? I, this is my second year. Last year was my first year and won grade eight. It was your first year and you won grade eight. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely love that. Yeah. Now, what did you do that you think, in your opinion, was different and made your car stand out? I think probably the difference in our car was the fact that we put a 1100 horsepower LS and a pinch nose street rod and the turbo set up behind the grill. And so the radiator was in the trunk and it was over a hundred feet of stainless steel pipe. The turbo was at the front and yep. the radiator was in the rear. Yep. And so we had to run all the heating and cooling lines back and forth over a hundred feet of stainless. So when it was up in the air with the mirrors under it, people go, what's all the pipes for? What's going on? Yeah, so it was something I'd never seen. Yeah. And I think obviously grade eight, people had to see. That's seen. what it is. It's and about showing up. And the year of the car, 36 Pontiac, and it was a true moonshiner's car. So we brought in that theme of prohibition. The interior was done in oak barrel flooring. And oh, I would so we love carried to see the prohibition that. theme throughout the car. Yeah. It was really cool. It was fun. You made something different. You did it well, and it stood out. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's what, what it about. takes in this arena to get these trophies is you've got to do something that nobody else has done or put a twist on it, exactly. right? And this year, you know, beautiful vehicles, right? Again, more unique, cool things. Obviously, this Mercury here, you know, so beautiful. We walked around, we looked at cars. Yep. You know, I come every year. I'm yep. Here. Yep. I get into the middle line, take my picture, whatever. I was pretty good. I picked seven of the eight. That's okay. pretty good. You know, the Merc is my favorite, and we talked about it before because Bruce was a great builder. Yes. And what he did last year, being so over the top, so and, crazy, and to come back and have something like this. So you walked around. Yeah. You know what it takes yeah. to have a Riddler car. Yes. What, in your opinion, you like? Which ones are your favorites? How's that? Okay. Um, you know, the first thing you catch when you look around is the blue 55 because yes. it's so shiny and glitzy and glamorous. That's the one we got that interview with Mike as well, so that yep. definitely So that's a pipe popper that's going to draw the audience whether they like cars or not. Uh, 
the Merc the same way. Really cool. It's going to do the old school chopped street rod, my lead sled kind of look, and everything's beautiful, obviously. My personal, sure. uh, from a hot rod builder's perspective, is the pickup truck. Okay. Only because it took a lot of work to make that bed integrated with the cab. I know that's a lot of sheet metal work. But well, we know the history of the Riddler with pickup trucks. Yes. Not good. Not good. Not good. So, but from a guy who's had to build a car like that, that's a ton of sheet metal. I mean, that's, and I've never seen it. I've never seen anybody integrate a bed into a cab. No. And that's done very well. Again, you know, I was, you know, before, underneath you can see yeah. some more intense. Yes. Have you looked at the, you looked at the Nova? Yeah, oh, yeah. That, to me, you know, again, I see it differently, and not as a builder, I see it a as a race my, car. Race car. Well, but I see it as my eye when I take pictures. Yeah. And every time I go to the Nova, I go back two or three times. See something out. different. Right. Then you go to like the sleeper, which I know won't make the Riddler, is that super big. Oh, all the way at the other end. That's slick. You know? And now we got two we got two Mustangs. Yes. You know, we got a so we got a you know we got a we got a little bit of Guess what? Thing. It's Riddler time. I know. But <laughs> it is, it's Riddler time. <laughs> and we got 32 car 32 ports, no fenders, so we know where that's gonna go. Yes. So, you know, again, if I had to go to the bank and I gotta put all my money. I give it to Glenn first. <laughs> I'm gonna have. I'm definitely gonna have to go. I mean, it's just it's gonna be interesting. Yep. It's gonna be interesting. So, Glenn, before we leave, tell us about your shop. Well, I know you built the car yourself in your shop. Correct. Most I did all. The, well, I didn't do all the work. Right. My people and I. Uh, they are the best team around. The Garage Mahal. So registered U.S. trademark. So don't be copying that. Okay, <laughs> that sounds familiar. Uh, but it's so, spelled, but it's built different. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, we our audience before the grade eight was different oh, yeah. than our audience we after build, the grade eight. Build, yes. okay. People are calling up saying, "We saw your Pontiac. I want a car like that. Can you build me one?" So the line is starting to grow. I mean, it's growing. Yep. Uh, but we're not going to lose where we came from. from. Of course. Right? We still love to build cars that people get out and drive. Yes. You know, drive them like you stole them. Uh, we're building a Challenger right now that's oh, pro touring nice. that's going to be over the top. The customer's not sparing any expense. He's letting us dream. And it's going to be a handful. Be done this summer. Right. Uh, plan to take it to a few key shows to show off what we can do where you don't have to spend a Will million you take dollars. It to I don't know if the customer wants to do that. We've got a couple of really cool cars coming up. You know, our Riddler for next year is in the works, which we can't talk about. We'll have to talk about it off the record. Off the record. Yeah. Yes, we will, 100%. So, um, yes. I forgot what I was going to say. Your Garage Mahal. Garage Mahal. Where is it at? Where is it based okay. in? Um, so our shop, Garage Mahal, is outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, in the beautiful Smoky Mountains, little town of Maryville, Tennessee. <laughs> I knew it was the same one. I'm from Maryville. So no way, that's us. You wouldn't believe it. I was actually planning to come and just knock on the door. You should. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah, that's us. That funny? I'm in Maryville, and that is one of the places, because every now and then, that's what I like to do, is go see the dealerships, like we did the Street Side Classic to everybody. That was great. And then I also like to Shoot, shops, yeah, that's awesome. You guys get great reviews. I read the reviews. So Super, thank you. I will be seeing you again. Is, please stop by anytime. Cool. You know, that's what we're all about. So, yeah, that's what we do. We're in the Smoky Mountains and we love it. We love where we live. We love our customers. We love what we build. It's it's a win win. You know, at 65 years old, my I'm looking at a pretty short front end of my car. Right. Well, I got a big back end of my car, uh, so I'm gonna make every moment count. Wow, every day this is. Um, I'm glad I ran into you. Thank you, Al, for introducing no, no us. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Be blessed, my friend. Thank you. You too, sir. Okay. Bye.
call the cars that catches your eye. Definitely. When you make a car, you got to do something that's going to have everybody just stop by, and people have been stopping. That's definitely the reason of building one. <laughs> that's it, sir. So what have you got here? I have a 2000 Cadillac DeVille D DTS. Um, it also is considered a DHS also because it's the um, higher luxury model. Okay. And in 2000 when it came out, what was the color? 2000 when it came out, it was diamond white. Okay. Um, roughly 2005, it turned into basically what it is now. And look at all these colors. There is so much happening, but I'm absolutely loving it because it all flows. Every color complements the other colors. Yes, ma'am. There's 32 different colors between the house of color candy paint, the pearls, the metallics, and the pinstriping and leafing. It's There's 32 different colors. You can stand here for a while and see something different the longer you look at it. Oh, I, I agree. I have been looking at it, and I want to look at the pinstriping up close as well. But before we get more into the colors, and we are going to see that in detail, let's have a look at my favorite part that drew me to the car, the rims. The rims. <laughs> what have you got here? What have you done to this? These were basically a one-off set. They were built by Davin. Um, there's only one, one set produced, and it was for this car. With, wow. the, with the wheels, we featured the name of the car, which is Taylor Made. Taylor the car made. was built to reflect a lot of the car scenes from your big wheel vehicles, your airbagged vehicles, and your low riders. Um, so that's that's just basically how we came up with the concept. Okay. So the, the wheels were all hand engraved. Hand engraved. And hand now engraved. you've carried that forward over to the doors as well. To the doors as well. Look at this, everyone. This is absolutely beautiful. So these, this design here, this pattern would be custom to this car only? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Wow. And when it comes to, if anybody's out there and they want to go bold and do something like this, 32 colors. There's 32 colors, definitely. <laughs> Where would you start from on a project like this? You, you got you to gotta come up with a color design in your head and what's, what, do you, what the ultimate goal is. Um, I've always been in the low, the low rider scene and whatnot. I love the metal flake and the pinstriping and the patterns. But I also, you know, enjoy the big wheels, catchy eye and everything else. Yeah. So it's finding colors that go well with each other without clashing. That's, and you just yeah. let it go. Yeah, that's well said. Colors that go well with each other. Because when you look up close, everybody, these colors just flow. They flow. You know, separately, if you were to look at them, you would think you know that's a green that's a pink they don't go together but somehow side by side they look absolutely brilliant don't? exactly <laughs> come here let's have a look at the hood you've got beautiful pinstriping at the top and that pattern is there carried over to the grill it's love more that. hand engraving yes ma'am absolutely love that and there's the pinstriping everybody tailor made and what have you got under the hood? It's just the stock North Star engine that came factory with it. The car has roughly 80,000 miles on it. Yep. Um, and I do drive it. It don't sit in the garage. Um, it, I drive it to shows. This show I didn't because the weather was horrible here. Yes, it was. So it was trailered in, but it's a drivable vehicle. It's a beautiful vehicle. And you've done stuff on the inside as well. Very limited. I, try, I wanted to keep the luxury feel to it without yeah. going too extreme on the inside. So it's pretty much all stock interior other than like accents and highlights um and then like audio upgrade so originally everything that you see painted used to be wood grain okay but we end up taking the crazy paint and brought it on the inside of the vehicle just to give it a nice little accent without overdoing it since the outside of the car is so loud you did it actually really well and future project is doing a little more to the interior okay okay but i love where everything that was wood You've just carried over a little bit of the exterior into it, and it looks really well. And even in the back doors here, just the dash, just the small things. Just a dash of color. Just a dash of the color. The outside is so so wild, I guess you so say. Wild. I just wanted to try to keep things calm. I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. And you've been invited here. Is there a class you're participating in? I believe the, the class that they have me placed in is called conservative hardtop. Why do they do that? You know what? It, I makes, it makes no sense to me on how I class that because I have 
<laughs> There's other vehicles here with a similar style. Yes. That are in like the lowrider class. Yeah. And more on that end, but for some reason I am in that class. You know, I was at another show. Um, where was it? I think it was the Bluegrass Custom Wheels, and there was a gentleman there as well, and he had a beautiful like just there was speed striping all over it. And I asked him what class he was in, and he said the conservative hardtop. And I said, there's nothing conservative about your car. And like you, Doug, there is nothing conservative about this. When I originally brought the car in on Wednesday to drop it off um, to get it set up for the show, they had me in one class and then moved me to this class. So I'm just, I'm not sure on how their thinking process or their placement process. There must be some kind of a requirement that I have seen other cars that have been multicolored go into that class. Yeah, I have seen that. And I don't understand the thinking, the thought process behind that, but... If I see one of those judges, then that's one of the questions I'll definitely exactly. be asking. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doug. Thank you, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. I like big wheels and I do like the high-end trucks but nothing comes better than the shredder or monster trucks in general. Scott, how's it going? It's good. How are you doing? Good, good. Absolutely love what is behind you and you were just telling me before that this is here and you guys are raising money for the museum, the monster truck museum. Um, it's a, we don't raise money. Uh, we, we support the museum and advertise for the museum. We're heavily involved. Marks are we're members. And um, so we up here to benefit the museum, display for them, and, and uh, otherwise raise awareness. Uh, but it's a place we have uh, the seven trucks, historic trucks, seven of the ten trucks, that, some of which are permanent, others rotate in and out as owners allow. Okay. So, right in, so we keep it fresh. And then we put on shows uh, twice a year a spring show and a fall show. And this is at the museum? This is at the museum. Monster Truck Museum, where is that at? That's in Butler, Indiana. And um, teams will donate their time for the shows and, and their equipment come out and put on sh shows for the fans, uh, car crushes, I mean, modern trucks airing them out, you know, some world famous drivers. In some and you stuff. love this because oh, even you're talking about it and you're smiling. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a real, really intimate setting, uh, yep. the mo probably more so than uh, most of your shows. So get a lot of fan interaction with the drivers, the teams, or whatever, and, and rubbing elbows throughout the whole entire day. Nice. And you drive the shredder. I do. One of one of several guys. One of the several guys. Well, Scott, why don't we go all the way around so people can still take pictures with this, and I don't want to get in the way of that. Yeah. But oh, I do want to see the shredder and exactly what suspension it's on and what's happening with it because we all love the monster trucks, right? So what have we got here? Uh, this is a bit of an old school build, built traditionally like the, the trucks were 30, 35 years ago when the industry first got started. So this truck has a subframe, it has a stock frame of the original pickup, which originally was a fire truck. Okay, so now we're talking, and so this the builder, was a fire truck? Yeah, it was originally a fire truck, <laughs> and then we built a, a custom subframe. And as far as suspension and stuff, it's in drivetrain, it's typically basically out of a, a five-ton military truck. Okay. Five-ton military axles. Actually, the axles are both front axles. That's why you got rear steer. So you have two front axles, so it gives you the ability to, to steer the back, back wheels as well, which really shortens up the turning radius on a truck like this, which yes. would take a country mile normally. Yes. <laughs> but wow. as typical, those trucks in this, that time frame, they, they, uh, they ride a lot rougher than today's. Yep. They're big, they're bad, they're bouncy. And that's <laughs> what you want in a monster truck. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I prefer the old school ones. This Me is what too. we would, would be considered an old school. Yeah. Oh, I'm it's a fan, uh, I'm above all, like everybody else. And I just have a, a you know, and I think a lot of guys do have an affinity for the, and respect for how the old guy, the, the pioneers started. 100%. Couldn't agree with you more. But you know, Scott, I was telling you, you told me you drive this, and I'm looking at it. How do you get in? Because I, don't, I see you. We do you. it the old school way. I do. I like the doing old it the old school way. way. I want to like, see what like, the old school way is. Just like the forefathers did. I'm so. thinking that it's you climb up on top of the tires. <laughs> There's a way to do that. Yes. <laughs> Let's have a look.
It's actually a lot simpler than what you think. But all right, maybe let's, not. I mean, I just don't see a um, a step ladder coming out. So at the press Jim, of a button. Jim Cramer, Jim Cramer made this pretty famous back in the day. What you would step up on the on the axle or your steering arm here, grab hold of something, and climb up on through the axle, through the wheel well, onto the tire. Over. Love it. It's not that bad. That is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. What are the chances that I can get up on this monster truck? I have no idea, everybody. I don't know if I'm game enough to try it. Of course, getting down is always the easy part. Yep, getting down would be the easy part. Okay, so you've got a step here, <coughs> and then basically just hold on to the bed and. Just, yeah, you just kind of climb like a monkey. We were all, all right. kids once. This truck currently today uh, is officially retired from, uh, but its duties today is we put seats in the, like in the summertime, we will put seats in a bag and then we give rides. Okay. It's a ride truck today. It's a ride truck. Uh, for something like this with display, we sometimes we like to pull the seats out, put the light bar back in, but that's for fam like you said, people love them. They do. They love me better when they get a chance to ride in one. Yes. So. That's my job. Well, I have, I rode on the back of one. I think they had it at um, in Tennessee. There was the monster truck show, so I went there with my son, and we were able to sit in the back and really feel the bounces. Yeah. But yeah, I've never climbed on top of the wheels to get into the front. You're asking me to hold that for you? Okay, you can hold it. <laughs> now this should be fun because I've got it inside military trucks, and you know I've always been inside the um, the beautiful custom cars, the classic cars that we've done. And the mini trucks are, also, are always awesome because I get to go to the top to where the shooter sits. But a monster truck and climbing on top of a wheel, I haven't done that. So I'm gonna put this down here and see if I can remember what Scott did exactly. All right. Okay. I got up. <laughs> so at this point you just kind of you can put your foot yep on the nerf bar there and then reach it there you go and you can push push the door there you go there you go i did it you know yours was a lot more smoother whereas i was more like a monkey just grappling off. <laughs> but you know what i got in it's absolutely brilliant i'm on top of the now tire as go. well <laughs> now a, a jump careful. i can do The jumping Ooh. part I can do, boom. There we go, everybody. I got on top of the monster truck. I hope you like that. Scott, I appreciated this so much. Absolutely brilliant. The suspension, I did want to know that. Can you come and still tell me? Again, it's, uh, it's five ton military. So these are military axles, leaf springs. So we have leaf springs. We have gas shocks. Okay. Uh, when, when this is what you know, like you put on your pickup truck, yeah, stock pickup truck. But we also have airbags. Yeah. Right. We can, uh, we can reduce or increase the pressure in the airbags and make it ride a little bit more like. And that was added on. That wasn't part of the military truck. That was added Not the on. Airbags. That's something that like out of a semi truck. Okay. Okay. Now back 30, 40 years ago, they, they didn't really do that so much. But um, wow, brilliant! So fire truck at the top. Military truck underneath, mixed in with semi truck. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Yep. A little bit of everything. But that was monster truck. They, they, you know, whatever works. Whatever would but, work. But you know, and, and the pioneers, a lot of the stuff had to be home, uh, custom fabricated, built themselves because the parts weren't readily available in the early days. When now, did the monster nowadays, truck phase begin? Um, technically, uh, some of them uh, uh, when they had the original day, uh, originally. When they first start building in phases, yeah, the credit you know like 1975 officially. Okay. But in terms of like uh, crushing cars, yes. Bob Chandler started crushing cars in I think 81, 83. Jeff Dane was uh, was is kind of like known as 
the very first crush yeah. car. There's a little bit of dispute there, but because um, that's what I remember. Like in the '90s, I remember on the TV. It's just it's ma it was just massive. I was in the Silver Dome the first time Bigfoot crush cars in the Silver Dome. I was 13 years old. I've been hooked since then. There you go. So, 30, 33 years later, got the chance myself. Yeah. Now I'm driving. It's awesome. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Thank you so nice much. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Bugs Bunny's here too. I hope you're not too hot in there. <laughs> That's awesome, mate. Take care. Thank you for doing this. There you go. Here's Bugs Bunny's car. I always always feel sorry I've got a real soft spot for people who are inside those costumes because it can get really hot so good on him but yeah he would be steaming up in there <laughs> 